Hey everybody. So a few days ago, this user, Toasted Toasty, asked me if I could try the popular TikTok slug model on my printers. Uh, and I thought it might be an interesting thing to try. So I grabbed the model from Thingiverse. I will put the link in the description. And I have it loaded up here in uh, Lychee. So this is at 100% on the build plate of the Photon Mono X. And let's take a look at this model and see if, if we have a uh, any chance of a successful print happening here on the Mono X. Uh, let's drop this down and take a look. So all our first few layers here look okay. And what I'm really looking for is to see if, if there's enough space for the resin to drain out uh, as this model's printing. Uh, so you, you know, it's the light's going to shine, obviously it's going to freeze these parts, and you'll need to be able to have enough drainage as it goes. Now it's getting tighter and tighter here, and then something interesting happens. This. So now we're starting to get uh, a little bit of a bowl shape here, if you will. Uh, this uh, fortunately will be upside down of course so that should still have an opportunity to drain but the bowl shape is going to continue and get sort of deeper uh, and these are now nested in such a way that there's not a lot of opportunity for drainage in, be in between here and even the maker of this uh, model uh, admits that there's not a lot of space in here uh, but let's just keep going with this. And as it's building and building, these bowl shapes are getting deeper, but that's okay uh, because this will be upside down, like I said, and be draining. But boy, we're going to be going to be collecting a whole lot of resin in here. And uh, this area is really tight. And now it's going to start building it uh, here are our hinge shapes, and you can sort of see how they work, which is pretty cool. But I have a sneaking suspicion that these are all going to trap some resin. So this is very likely to not succeed, uh, in my opinion for resin printing. However, on Cura, uh, I would say if we pulled this in and uh, were to print it on FDM, I think there's plenty of people that have been having success printing this on a, on a filament-based printer. But even on FDM, you have the case of all of these severe overhangs that you're going to be expecting your printer to be able to handle. Uh, okay, we've got this loaded up. We're going to let it uh, print and we'll get back to you and see how it does on the Viper. I've got here the uh, slug print printing. Hopefully we won't have a second failure. Uh, when I first printed it, I tried to go boldly at 80 millimeters a second, uh, in spite of being warned that that would be a failure. And lo and behold, it did not adhere to the build plate well. Lifted, uh, the parts were sort of colliding with one another, and it looks like I'm getting a little bit of a lift on one of these parts again. I might have to do something to promote a little bit better adhesion, but fingers crossed this, uh, this doesn't keep lifting like this. I do have all the fans cranked, uh, but it does look like it's bending when it is cooling off. And over here, I've got the Mono X queued up with the slug. And let's give it a shot. A couple of interesting quirks that I've had with this model. And you can see one of the, uh, I don't know, antenna or something of the slug kind of broke off. And I, I had to put a, um, 
I put a brim here uh, around these parts because I was getting the first few layers weren't sticking really well, but now you can see they're, they're sticking pretty well. But anyway, the tolerances here are so tight that a small imperfection like the one that's like in the middle of one of these parts is going to cause a problem. And you can see, you can even see actually this antenna was lifting also, it just managed to stay attached, but uh, probably a raft is optimal for this, but uh, but so far this one's been okay. Coming to this, uh, this only has these layers left, uh, it's on layer 664 of 775. You can see it's printing in there. Now, whether or not it's going to articulate is a whole different story. So we'll see how it comes out. Here we are. This finished in 2 hours 35 minutes. You can probably see him right under there, hanging out. So, we'll get this guy off the bill plate, see if we can get it to articulate. In the meantime, our friend here is still printing okay, but it still has some time left, so I'll follow up in a little bit. Alright everybody, our slug is complete here. Took 10 hours, 30 minutes at these print settings. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be okay, actually. I can see some space in the between the parts, so let's see how that goes. Uh, now, I will tell you what settings I used to uh, get some success here. You can see one of those sort of antenna nub things, the one down the bottom here, broke off. But uh, other than that, it seemed okay. Uh, I printed this uh, with OctoPrint, uh, and I think for the most part it was okay. Now, let's check over here. Uh, we also have... The resin version and looks like we had a good I used a bunch of medium supports and he's hanging in there good I can see you can see this resin dripping I'm going to given that this is a bunch of um, hollow pieces I'm gonna have to really let this soak and swish around in some alcohol to clean out the inside of the model and I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to cure the inside uh, I'll just bend this in a bunch of different directions and keep uh, keep hitting it with UV light. Let's get these uh, both off and we'll see how they do. I just popped this off and you can see, uh, I just wanted to see the brim. So I was having a tough time with some of these pieces uh, when they initially started getting attached. I'm probably going to have to clean in between here to get this to move very well. But right now he's not moving. But, it feels pretty so, ooh, pretty cool. No, I think this is going to work. Looking pretty good. Let's get it cleaned up. All right, everybody. We have our two slugs here. This one, which is entirely uh, static, I guess you'd call it. That was, uh, it's a shame because I really thought that might work uh, the way the hinges were designed. But, of course... On the on the uh, FDM printer, it was fine. Uh, I had showed you I had printed this with a uh, with a brim, and so there was a little cleanup here. I just had to get an Exacto and kind of get these moving. But as soon as as soon as they uh, the seam was free under here, uh, it's of course free flowing. So anyway, uh, this little piece of the antenna didn't have a good adhesion to the build plate but this side worked out okay so and these built fine without any support or anything so yeah pretty cool pretty cool little model like i said this is at 150 percent um of size and i used 0 0.15 uh, layer height to sort of scale everything up including the layer height i think it's nice and smooth and looks good the reason i did that was to get these sections and I think you can see these sections in here to get these sections a little bigger um, and that way by making them a little bigger uh, hopefully they stuck would stick to 
the brim a little better and, and everything would build. Because I was having problems since this is the only... These little uh, sort of crescent shapes here are really the only things touching the surface, the build surface. I was having problems at 100% size uh, with these just kind of like bending as they were cooling off up. And then the print head would like nick one of them, pull one off, uh, start kicking it around the build plate and stuff. So at 100, even at 150% size, uh, that was still happening a little bit. And so I finally just said, forget it. I'm going to leave it at 150% and also throw a brim. Uh, clearly, there's some more cleanup to be done under here to kind of smooth these out. But, yeah, it wor worked pretty cool. It's, uh, I dig it. This is, like, the cheapest PLA I could find on Amazon. Uh, and some not too... Um, specific settings really I, I used I used a little bit of of what was just recommended by the model creator uh, I did slow the speed down to 40 millimeters a second on uh, print on the Viper uh, this I printed at 0 0.5 millimeter uh, 1.8 second cure time and um, 2.5 lift speed so it's it's what i would i would think would be reasonably successful and uh and a uh, lift height of eight so on the mono x so i don't uh, i don't know if changing the settings the print settings would have been too successful really i think the material would make the difference uh for resin you need something that um is a little different than that uh, but this is just Elegoo standard. So I, I, I'm considering the two materials very standard, very comparable, right? This is like a very baseline standard PLA. This is a very baseline standard resin. Uh, reasonably tuned settings given the model. And also this is 150% size. I thought by upsizing it, uh, it would give the opportunity for the joints to drain a little bit. Uh, and it just, it just didn't. It's a it's like a, you know, it's like a stone. So, anyway, digging it. It was a fun experiment. Thanks for watching.